and I'll let you shake it. Okay, sound good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight my video just so you can see me. In video. Okay, uh, let me know if anybody can't hear me or if anything is uh, unclear. Always here to explain things more. So, core. Um, the core is super important for us as bartenders, as humans, because it's the base of support for the entire body. Um, the core is most commonly missed, misaligned with just being the abs. People think that it's just your abs and that's what constitutes the core, but it's so much more than that. Um, besides the abdominals, we have the obliques, we have the transverse abdominis, we have the glutes, the hip flexors, the erector spinae, which is your lower back. Basically everything that connects into your spine and your hips, in addition to what makes this kind of like the center of everything going on in your world. Um, and so why is the core so important? Besides like most of our bodies are not designed to be able to have six pack abs. So that should be your like actual goal or reason for doing anything with your abdominals. It's just like, it's just not the way our bodies are designed. Not everybody's like that. Um, but core strength is super important because it provides you with better posture. Better posture provides you with better stability. Uh, and better stability gives you better balance. Better balance behind the bar means less slips, trips, and falls. Less chance of injury. Um, it protects the organs, so that's super important. Um, and it gives you the ability to be able to stand up for those 12 to 14 hour marathon shifts that unfortunately are still very much norm in our industry. So that's why we need a, better, a, big, uh, a big strong core. Um, also having the right kind of shoes to support you behind the bar will lead to everything kind of working in conjunction with one another. So make sure you're always wearing slip proof shoes that have a wide base for your toes to be able to spread out um, and have good arch support. Uh, some of the reason why we have some core instability is because most of us will experience our arch, arches dropping as we get older, right? So that will make you become more flat-footed, uh, and it also changes your pitch, changes the way in which your body is completely set up. And that's normal, and it's fine. We just want to take care of our body in between to kind of support that type of situation. So everybody go ahead and stand up with me. Uh, if you don't have your video on, I'm just going to over explain things to make sure that you're on the same page as me. But what I want to do is go through a ready position. Anytime I say a ready position, it's going to be in reference to what we're doing right now. The ready position is also what you're going to want to think about doing when you're behind the bar. Or if you're a chef and you're in the back of the house, then I want you to think about doing this when you are prepping, working over a stove, whatever it might be. So. Zoom tight, whoever that was. Uh, for our ready position, I want everybody to get their legs, their feet about shoulder width apart, and then I need to like get some contrast in the colors of my room here, but my toes are slightly turned out. So this is my ready position, right? So I'm ready to do just about anything. I'm great to be able to move side to side. I'm great to be able to move forward and backwards. And also my mobility in my hands is really good at this point in time. So. Let's do a quick practice so I can show you the mobility and fun part of like being in this ready position. So I want everybody to take their dominant hand and put it straight out in front of them. All right, thumbs up to the sky. From this position, I want you to try to turn your body as far as you possibly can and see what kind of mobility you have with that. Right, so take a mental note of that. Now, I want you to get in an overly wide position here, and I want you to do the same thing. Dominant hand straight out, try to rotate. You notice a bit of limitation in that? More than likely the answer is yes. Um, now, let's go with a super close together, feet together, hands out, and let's try to rotate. A little bit better than that super wide, but still not as good as that ready position that we had. And now last part, I want you to take whatever your dominant hand is, I want you to take that foot, cross it over top of the other one, and try to rotate again. This should be the most limiting uh, direction for you. 
and everybody's completely different. There might be some shoulder mobility uh, issues that, that prevent you from being able to turn a lot, but you'll see you have the most range when you are in this ready position. So that's why it's so important, especially for you as a bartender who is trying to like keep everything these and floss and very closely aligned with you. So our ready position. This is the place where we can go ahead and start working and engaging our core. If you want to engage your core, you're going to think about tucking your pelvis forward and pulling your belly button towards your spine. So this is me doing it on the side so you can see. I'm going to make a slight adjustment. That was an over-exaggeration. I'm just trying to show you here. So tucking the pelvis forward and pretend like you're pulling that belly button towards the spine. Roll those shoulders back. Bring those shoulder blades to together and down. Kind of like you're trying to pinch, pinch a small object there. And this is your ideal like core engaged ready position to move. You're strong, you're tall, you've got everything engaged from the abdominals to the glutes, everything in the hips and the lower back. All right, so you don't have to be on lockdown the entire time when you're behind the bar. But I want you to think about really trying to engage, tucking that pelvis forward, bringing that belly button towards the spine, and trying to make sure that your shoulders are rolled back. So you can go ahead and move easily side to side and do everything you need to do with bartending. The other thing that's really important with why we want to have this form is because there are two major things that happen to bartenders when they're behind the bar. Because of poor bar design, we have these major things that happen. Plus, posture is just something that gets harder to maintain as we get older. But our shoulders will roll forward, and it's kind of like the hunchback, which is like, this is an over-exaggeration. And to go along with that, we end up having this duck butt. So an overarched lower back. That is a result of generally a bar hitting you right here or at your knees and causing you to have to pitch forward to be able to serve your guests. So if you're able to get into that ready position and even a little bend in the knees won't hurt you, this will make it for you. Glad you're looking out. What's up? Oh, talking to kiddos. So, just a little bit behind the science of like why it's so important to be in that ready position. So, the things that we're going to do today is going to help really open up our shoulders, get that back and that, that low back in a great position and engage the core so we don't have the rounded shoulders and overarch back. <clears throat> okay, enough talk. Let's do stuff. So, the first thing we're going to do is work on a hip hinge. The hip hinge is the basis for everything in the, in the, uh, in the core development and helps us with a really great squat form as well. Squats are an awesome way to build your core. So in that ready position, I'm going to show you here. Our butts are glorious and they're going to do all the leading of this particular exercise. To complete a hip hinge, starting from your ready position, I want you to push your hips back and take your back down, no more than parallel. And if this is as far as you can go, while keeping a nice, straight, engaged core and back, that's fine. And then push the hips forward, squeeze, squeezing the glutes at the top. So everybody do this along with me. Let's push our hips back, hip hinge, and push the hips forward, squeezing at the top. So I got tight buns right here. Your butt's in charge, your butt's moving everything, your butt's leading the posterior chain. So pushing back, and hips forward, keeping those knees nice and soft, we don't need a lock. Push back, you will feel this stretch in your hamstrings, so the back of the legs underneath of the glutes. Push forward, and once more. All right, so hip hinge. Great thing to stretch out the back, great thing to stretch out the glutes and the hamstrings. If you wanna add an extra challenge and you're looking for some good form technique, you can take a broom or a dowel and put it behind your back and maintain contact at your head in between your shoulder blades and your uh, tailbone. And you would do the same hip hinge and that'll tell you exactly how that form looks for you. So that's how you can test and see if you're doing it right. Building on from that hip hinge, we can go right into the squat. So starting still in that ready position, we're gonna hip hinge, but this time we're gonna bend our knees at the same time. So still leading with that butt pushing back, but now we are bending our knees at the same time pushing through the heels to take ourselves back up. From the side, ready position, I'm going to hip hinge, but also bend my knees. 
All right, so let's do a couple of those squats. Take it down. Good squat form. Your legs can come parallel to the ground. If your butt dips slightly below, that's fine, but that's as far as it should go. My spine is very tall. Inhale on the descent. Exhale while you're pushing up. Give me two more. All right. So, proper squats are a really great way to be able to get around your bar, especially if you're trying to like bend in and get something from a low boy. Uh, we want to have that proper squat form so we can build up that core strength, build up our, boot, our booties, our glutes, make sure that they're able to support everything, and also get ourselves to be able to crouch down, hidden tiger, into a low boy, or anything else we need around the bar. Because you definitely shouldn't be doing bending over, twisting, jerky motion. All right. Proper squat form, proper hip hinge. Now we can move on to kind of isolating one side. So we're gonna do the same thing for our hip hinge, but we're gonna pick just one leg to do it on to start. So I want everybody to think about what your dominant leg is. So if you're a righty, your dominant leg might be right. If you have any injuries, that might be your non-dominant leg, whatever it is. I want you to pick your non-dominant leg to start off. All right, that way our brain concentrates all the energy into that leg and that movement. So what we're gonna do, pick your non-dominant leg to stand on. We're going to lift up that other foot, and we're just going to do the same hip hinge, but now on one leg. If you need to put this foot down to keep your balance, that's totally fine. But our goal is going to be pushing that hip back, coming down, let's see, balance is always a key, and coming back up. So let's all try this together on our non-dominant foot, pushing those hips back, only going so far as you can maintain balance. I also don't want you to open up your hips. If you're coming down and you're turning like this, you're going too far. So, <clears throat> hip hinging on the one leg, pushing back. The farthest you will go is parallel to the floor. But if it's shorter than that, that's totally fine. So let's go ahead and try to do 10 on this one side. I'm gonna creep and see if I can see anybody doing things. Yes, yes, yes. Looking good. Love this. All right. Again, inhale on the descent. Breathing through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Nice, strong, tall spine. Squeezing the glutes at the top. If this ever becomes too easy for you, and it's definitely not easy, you can add in dumbbells. Totally your call. So we're trying to work till again to 10. It's a non-dominant leg for a reason. I have plenty of knee injuries on both sides of my leg, but this is the one that has the current amount of knee injuries. So I'm choosing to focus all of my energy on that. Your brain automates a lot of processes, so the muscle control on the dominant leg will be much easier when we switch over to that. So think about keeping, think about making some imaginary headlights on your hips and they're just gonna be pointing straight down to the ground. If they start to stray out to the side, then we wanna, again, narrow the stance that we're going. Okay. All right. And I'll bet everybody's pretty close to 10 at this point in time. So what we'll do next is go ahead and move over to the dominant side. Same thing, place that dominant foot on the ground, the non-dominant leg comes up. If you need to tap it down at any point in time for balance, that's great. Push those hips back, balancing on the one leg, and let's try to go for 10 here as well. So pushing back, bring that hip forward, squeezing at the top, and go about it again. Balance, it's fun. All right, I'm gonna watch a little bit as everybody's doing this. Other things to keep in mind, while you're doing this single leg, this is called a single leg Romanian deadlift. RDLs, single leg hip hinge, whatever you wanna call it. What tends to happen with our feet is our toes will try to like scrunch into the ground and like dig in to really make sure that we have stability, but try to avoid that as much as possible. Let your toes spread 
out and just get a better base underneath of you. Thinking about breathing while we're doing these things, we want to inhale on the easy part, exhale on the hard part. That's the best way that I can do it because there's a lot of things about flexion and extension uh, that people have different thoughts on. But my biggest thing is to make sure that you are able to breathe out through the hardest part. That way you get a little boost getting yourself back up into your position. So I would inhale on this descent. <sighs> Exhale on the hard part because I'm trying to keep myself push forward with some force. Inhaling through the nose. Okay, we're working to try to get to 10 here. Hopefully everybody is close. Watching. I know my normal, my regular people know what to do for this one. Don't need to watch. But you should feel hips engaged, abs engaged, glutes engaged, and your leg. And honestly, because your whole body's trying to tense up and hold on to this position and we do it regularly and safely, the whole body's gonna get a workout with this one. But this is for improving balance, improving strength, especially when we do these exercises on one leg. It helps with any kind of imbalances that we might have built into us already. All of our bodies are gonna have strong sides and less strong sides. And that's totally fine. All you have to do is keep a mental inventory of everything so you can pay a little bit more attention to that side that needs some TLC. You don't want it to stay less strong, you wanna build it up so it matches the other side and you can be as symmetrical as possible, even though that's not necessarily something all of us can achieve. All right, so I feel like we probably had some good hip hinging squatting and uh, single leg Romanian deadlifts. Um, so next thing we're gonna do is my favorite stretch in the world that's gonna work on mobility and strength for the core and it's gonna help us transition down to the mat. So we're gonna do something called a Spider-Man lunge. Everything I do is based around superheroes, I guess. So what I'd like for you to do is get into a tall plank position. In that tall plank position, our hands are gonna be underneath of our shoulders. Legs are straight out, back is flat. And from here, we're gonna take our right foot, place it on the outside of our right hand. So that's starting position. If you can, I want you to take your right elbow and try to touch to the ground outside of that foot. And then I want you to rotate your arm forward and reach to the sky. Holding here, bring that hand back down, take that foot back, and now we'll repeat on the other side, on the left side. So left foot comes onto the outside of our left hand. Left elbow, if you can, you get it down to the floor or you can stretch just as hard as you can as far as your body allows and then we rotate again and reach towards the sky bring that back down let's do a couple more on each side the reason why I love this stretch so much is because it works on mobility at every joint in the body so ankles hips low back middle back shoulders wrists Everything is working here. Getting a stretch, getting some mobility work, and really just an overall great warm-up stretch slash something you can do in your regular practice when you're working out. Let's do one more on each side. I do have some music going in the background, but don't know if you can really hear it because I'm trying to explain way too many things. I can turn it up if you like. All right, so we're finished with that. I want you to go ahead and place your knees down on the ground for a second so we can talk about planks. So planks are a fantastic, uh, fantastic workout exercise thing that you can put into everyday use um, that works your entire body and there's also a bunch of different variations that work great for it. Besides like the plain old boring plank. Like I don't like doing that because I'm just thinking about how long I have to hold that thing. So I like to do little uh, activities for it. But let's talk about two different variations for plank form that you can kind of work on on your own. In the plank, you have the option of doing this tall plank, which is the hand straight out, 
puts a little bit of pressure on our wrist. So if you have any wrist issues, we want to kind of avoid this. This is almost easier to do anyways, because there is, your feet are taking a lot of uh, the weight and pressure off the body. So the other thing, you can always do knees down for modified plank if you want, but the better way to do this to avoid any kind of wrist pain is to go onto our forearms. And in this forearm plank, now that elbows are going underneath of our shoulder blades, we're always trying to stack our joints to make sure that we're staying safe. Our legs are straight out, our backs are straight, our core's engaged, so think about pulling that belly button towards the spine. Butts are down, not up. If you have a big booty and it's gonna perch a little bit, that's fine, but I just don't want these things to be up here. You can also modify this again by putting your knees down. That's totally fine. But this is a standard for our plank, something that works really well for doing a lot of different exercises. Go ahead and place your knees down for a second, give yourself a break. We're gonna talk about a couple different variations for what you can do with this plank. Again, I think regular planks are just boring as all get out. So I like to do some different variations of it to increase like core workout, but also just keep ourselves like not thinking, oh God, this is a plank, this sucks. So there's a couple different things we can do. Let's everybody get into that forearm plank position. Nice, nice long lines throughout the body. Hips are down keeping everything straight, we can push through our toes and then pull back into the heels and we can do a plank slot. So pushing forward, pulling back, and basically you're getting a little bit of work in the arms plus a stretch in the calves. So plank saws are one that can be fun. Go ahead and break for a second. Um, in addition to the plank saw, another one we do if you don't have too much wrist pain is going to be a plank push-up. That is going to be getting from that forearm plank position to the tall plank position and back down. So if you can do this with me for a couple reps, let's try it. If not, go back to that forearm plank and work on your saws for a second. So starting in that forearm plank, nice straight lines, nice engaged core. We can push ourselves up into that tall plank position and then back down. This is a plank push-up. So let's work on that. Four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and get back down on your knees for a quick break. So a plank push-up. If you don't have too many wrist problems, that's a good one to do. If you are on the wrist, and it feels a little wonky, think about trying to grip your mat with your fingertips kind of putting pressure into the mat. That'll take away pressure off of your wrist and also making sure that you're stacking your joints where your wrists are going directly underneath of your shoulder, that will help with this as well. So, moving on from the plank push-up, we're gonna do a plank knee to elbow. So starting in that forearm plank, I want you to try to take your right knee to the outside of your right leg Left knee to the outside of your left arm. I'm saying the wrong face, sorry. So let's go ahead, get in that position here. Forearm plank, elbows are underneath of our shoulders, core's engaged, and we can take our knees to the outside. We're trying to go knee to elbow. There will be, should not be any movement of your body while we're doing this, because we can just bring that leg on the outside. So knee to elbow. If you want to twist this up a little bit, you can do opposite knee to opposite elbow. Go for four, three, two, and one. Okay, so planks. There are so many that you can do. Um, I will move off of this now though, just because I know it's not for everybody. Um, the next thing we're going to do after the plank is going to be a bird dog. Bird dog is an incredible exercise um, that a lot of people probably use if they're in a yoga practice, but it's mainly that we don't get the great benefits of it because a lot of people aren't doing it with the right form. So let's talk about what that form is. So 
This is called a quadruped position. That means my knees and my hands are on the ground. I want to check that my hands are underneath my shoulders and that my knees are underneath my hips. Whenever we stack our joints like this, it makes ourselves in a safer position to do exercises without stressing out the joints unnecessarily. From here, we also have to engage our core. I'm going to tuck in because I know my shirt's like leaning down, but I am pulling my belly button towards my spine. I'm pulling those shoulder blades together and down, pull those shoulder blades back and down, and I'm tucking my pelvis to make sure I have as straight of a line in my back as humanly possible. Starting from here, let's just work on our hands first. So I want you to take your right hand, outstretch it as far as you can while maintaining that nice neutral spine and try to bring it up towards the ear. So it's gonna require a little shoulder lift and then back down. Repeat with the left side. Left hand comes up, we're reaching forward, trying to get that arm towards our ear if you can't, go as far as you can, straight out, without hyperextending. All right, so straight out here and back down. Let's repeat one more time on each side. Hands go straight out, still engaging that core. And here. So your arm stretching might be limited due to shoulder mobility, and that's totally fine. Just keep a mental check of where you have some sites of pain or where you have a little less mobility and we can pay more attention to that throughout any of our practices. The next part of this before we put it all together is stretching those legs back out. Now in the quadruped position my hands are going to be fairly close together. I am no more than shoulder widths apart. My knees are also just slightly smaller, more narrow than the hips width. From here I'm going to stretch my leg straight out without changing my spine. So kicking my right leg straight out here, squeezing the glute at the top, no hyperextending, that's where a lot of people get themselves into trouble, and then back down. Repeat it with the left side, kick that leg straight out, squeezing that glute at the top, making sure you're not hyperextending, no change in that spine, and back down. One more time on each side, right leg comes straight out, squeeze, back down, and left leg. Out, squeeze, and back down. Now, if you're able to, the bird dog is putting this all together. So, opposite hand with opposite leg going straight out. So let's try it with the right side first. Right hand, left leg. No change in the spine. Keep that spine locked in, neutral, tall, whatever word you need to know. That means don't curve it like this, all right? So let's go. Right arm, left leg, straight out. I have a little bit of mobility issue in my shoulders because of lots of roller derby injuries, so it's hard <laughs> to get up here. Hold, squeeze, back in, no change of that spine. Left arm, right leg, straight out here. Hold, squeeze, no change in that spine, bring it back in. Really want to try to make sure that your spine's not changing positions in between everything that you're doing. So a lot of people err by going here, and then they'll come up and they'll round their back out. So you want to stay nice and tall. All right, so let's go one more on each side. Straight out. Squeeze back down. And last one, left arm, right leg. Squeeze back in and down. From here, let's go ahead and just take our hips back onto our heels, and we can reach our hands forward and let our head just kind of be neutral, relaxing here. We're doing a little child's pose. From this position, let's go ahead and walk our hands over to the right side as far as you can, and what you should be feeling is a stretch coming from underneath of your left armpit through those transverse abdominis into the hips. And let's take it back over towards the center and then walk ourselves all the way over to the left. This time you should be feeling the stretch underneath of the right transverse abdominis 
through the ribs, into the hips. And let's take it back towards the center here. Okay, so what I'd like for everybody to do now is just go ahead and get yourself comfortably onto the ground on your back. We're gonna do a little bit of work on our glutes here because glutes are one of the major parts of your core. Plus, I just love working on glutes anyways, right? That's me, I'm a booty enthusiast. So, what we're gonna do is lay down on the mat. I want your knees bent, and I want your feet to be underneath of your knees. A good way to figure out what the right form is for you is to put your fingertips straight out here, and then bring those heels back until they're just about touching where your fingertips are, all right? This is our starting position for a glute bridge. As you might guess from the wonderful title, it works on your glutes. There's also lots of fun variations that you can do with this one as well. So, what we wanna do is think about getting our back nice and flat on the ground. If your back is not flat on the ground, tilt those hips towards your face and pull that belly button towards the spine. You should feel yourself nice and glued in here. What we're gonna do is push through our heels to lift our hips up so we make that nice straight line from head to knee. So let's go ahead and do that together. Push through those heels, making a nice straight line here. Squeeze those glutes at the top and bring it back down. Still making sure we have that nice flat back. Let's go ahead and push up again through the heels. Try to think about pulling those knees apart too. If your knees like to knock together, try to mentally think about pulling them apart. Bring it back down. Let's go again, pulling it up. Squeeze, and really return. Up, squeeze, back down. For a quick pause, if you wanna make sure you're feeling this the right way, which should be in your glutes, that positioning with your heels underneath of your knees is gonna be what gets you there. If you have your knees too far forward, your feet too far forward, and you lift up, you'll feel it in your quads. That's how you know the difference, all right? so. Keeping those heels underneath of the knees. Let's push up again. Let's go for three more. Back up. Two more, back up. Squeeze, back down. And one more, squeeze, and back down. So the variations for the glute bridge are many. If you wanted to do a single leg bridge, what you can do is bring one knee into the chest. So I'm just picking my right leg since you can see that more clearly right now. I'm still making sure that that left heel is underneath of my knee, so I'm putting my fingertips out to give myself like a, a cue. I also have super long hands, so I come a little bit closer than my uh, little bit overlapped with my fingertips because of that. From here, you can go ahead and hold on to that knee, and we're just going to push through that left heel, lifting our hips off the ground. Hold and back down. This one should be a little bit tougher because we're just isolating the, the one leg. Push up, and down, up, good. Let's go three more. Push up, squeeze, back down, two, squeeze, back down, and last one. Push through the heel, squeeze, Back down. Let's trade it out. Right leg goes on the ground. Make sure that right foot is underneath of the knee. Right heel's underneath of the knee. Go with your fingertip method. Bring that left foot into the chest. And let's go again. Pushing through that right heel. Up, squeeze, back down. You may notice that one of these sides, let's bring it up, is gonna be a little bit easier to work with than the other. That just means that particular glute would love a little bit extra tension from you. Up, squeeze, back down, go for three more, squeeze, back down, two, squeeze, back down, and last one, up, squeeze, back down. All right, bring that foot down. Last variation I'll show you for today on the glute bridge. Let's go ahead, we're gonna do a frog glute bridge. So I want you to take both of the soles of your feet together, Press them down together and put them down onto the mat. So, 
Your heels, I don't want you to pull this in uh, any more than what is uncomfortable for you. So think about, it's probably not gonna get quite to where your fingertips are, depending on your flexibility, but let that be a goal. Let's get that back flat on the ground, tilting that pelvis forward, pulling that belly button towards the spine. Think about trying to keep those knees down. And now I want you to push through the outside edges of your feet to lift your hips off the ground. Squeeze and back down. Make sure those knees stay down. They want to come right back together when you get to the top. Push up, squeeze, back down. Let's go for three more. You'll notice that this changes from not just working your glutes back down to working on your adductors and abductors, those inner thigh muscles, which are super important and do help contribute to glute strength and hip flexor strength and mobility, all those things. Let's go for one more, pushing up through the sides, squeeze, and back down. Go ahead and shake out your legs, whatever you need to do. Glute bridges are super fun. Uh, again, there's way more variations than what we just did, but I like that as a good start. So, staying in the same position, we're going to move on to a circuit called dead bugs. Dead bugs look exactly the way that you might think. So, if you've ever seen a dead bug on your floor, its legs and arms might be up like this, right? So, our arms are going to go straight up, hands are over top of our shoulders, our knees are coming up over our heel, heel uh, hips, <laughs> and feet can be kind of relaxed at this point in time. We don't have to do anything too crazy. So, this is almost the opposite of a bird dog. We are going to still go opposite arm and opposite leg while trying to keep that back glued to the ground. So I want that natural arch that is normally with your back to go away. We pull that belly button towards the spine. We tilt our hips up. If you need to get your knees a little bit closer to your chest in order to make that happen, that's fine. The key is to keep that back on the mat the entire time. From here, we're going to extend opposite arm to opposite leg, going out only as far as what's comfortable and for what will prevent you from having the arch come back into your arm. Back towards the center. Opposite arm, opposite leg, left hand, right leg, back up. Let's go ahead and alternate and do this for a little while. Boom. Extension. There's a bazillion different variations for what you can do with the dead bug as well. Um, we'll just show you a couple of them for today since we only have a few minutes to get through a bunch more fun stuff. Go for two more on each side. go. Perfect. And then go ahead and bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. I know that can be a little stressful on that back. Not the intention, but it does happen. All right. Back up into that dead bug position. From here, now we're going to try doing same side. So same arm, same leg, extending at the same time. Go ahead. Kind of just, it, it's more of a mental, mental thing to keep in mind since we do so many things that are opposite, alternating arms and legs. Keeping that back glued to the floor. Tilt those hips if you need to make sure that's glued. Three, two, one. Next thing we're going to do from here, if you need to give yourself a knee hug, go for it. We're going to do just arms going back, just legs going out. This is definitely going to challenge the lower half of your abdominals, and it's going to make your arch in the back try to rear its head. So only go as far as what you can keep that straight back. So let's go. Just hands, just legs. Just hands, just legs. Take a note of how far you're able to get those hands back. Like, are they able to touch the ground? Or do we need to work on some mobility for that? Three, two, and last one. Go ahead and give yourself a little knee hug. The last thing we're going to do for this dead bug is going to be both arms and legs out at the same time. This is easier than something like a V-sit or a boat pose where you kind of have to do the same thing because our back gets to stay on the ground and we also don't have any strain in our neck. So. 
Set up in that dead bug position. What we're going to do, keeping that back glued to the floor, is extend both the arms and the legs at the same time. Extension, only as far as what keeps that back on the ground. So you're actively trying to pull that spinal cord, that belly button down into the mat. Extension, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and give yourself a knee hug, put your legs down, whatever you need to do to wiggle out. So know that burns out the quads a little bit for this. We get to stay in the exact same position for the next thing that we're gonna do. It's called a tabletop press. And it doesn't seem like it's that tricky, but it's actually really difficult and works super well when you're trying to build up the abdominals as a whole. Uh, so what we're gonna do, kind of starting in that dead bug position, we're gonna be pressing against our thighs, pressing against our quads while our quads press back against us. So, in this position of holding like the dead bug, I'm gonna take both of my hands, place them below my knees on the, on the biggest, neediest part of my, my quads, and I'm gonna push like hell into them while my legs are going to resist. Relax. You'll notice that this starts to burn if you are really, really going for it within five seconds. So we don't have to do too long, but we can do them frequently. So let's go ahead and do 10 mini sessions, all right? So let's get ready and push. Four, three, two, one, relax. Whew. Hopefully you all are feeling that, same way. Great workout here. Go for two, two, three, four, five, relax. Again, three, four, three, two, one. Relax, I like to confuse myself with my memory. It's very fun. Again, four, four, three, two, one. Relax. Again, five, four, three, two, one. Whew. These are good. Let's go for six. Four, three, two, one. Take your breath in when you're getting ready to do this. Let's go for seven. Four, three, two, one. Relax. We're almost there. Almost there. Keep pushing. These are good ones. Go for eight. Four, three, two, one. Nice. Two more. We got this. Hands up, nine, four, three, two, ten. Last one, deep breath in through the nose, hold, ten, four, three, two, one. Whew. That's a goodie. If you wanna just get that, this is something you can do while you're watching TV as well, which is awesome. Um, where we are right now, let's go ahead and just roll out our side. So we're gonna do a couple more things with the hips here and then we'll be done. Um, I'm gonna try to leave a little bit of room for questions, but Jane Fonda from the 1980s did some magical work with her workouts. She did it with very poor form, but they have been revitalized to do great things to help open your hip flexors, which would help support the activation of your glutes. So what I want everybody to do, go ahead and lay on their side. Nice, comfortable position, whatever you want to do with your hand. If it's outstretched here or propping yourself up, totally fine. I want you to take that bottom leg and just bend it slightly. Get it out of the way because we're going to focus on this top leg. Let's take this top leg and make sure that we are in a straight line. Flex that foot. I want it in a straight line from our heel through to our head. All right? Now, here's the fun part. I want you to take your toes. Point them towards the ground and I want you to get your heel towards the sky. And from here, I just want you to lift up. So you should feel this in the glutes and the hip flexors. If you want a little extra work here, you can take that foot slightly behind you and that'll target mainly the glutes or you'll just feel it more impactful in the glutes. All right? So these are the Jane Fonda. It's really important that you keep your foot flexed and have that toe angled towards the ground with the heel angled towards the ceiling. 
and keep the body in a straight line to feel this the right way. Let's go ahead and relax. That's something you can add into any routine. It doesn't seem like it does a ton of work, but I promise you it does not take much for it to really activate those hip flexors and feel a burn. You can combine that with some leg circles as well. So we're gonna keep that foot flexed. We don't have to worry about moving the angle of our foot, our toes or anything like that. And I just want you to make tiny circles with your hip going forward. So tiny circles, tiny circles, tiny circles forward. And then let's take it back, tiny circles back. All of these are working on opening the hip flexors, getting them to ignite because they help make the glutes work and it just helps for overall support here. All right, relax. Let's go ahead and take that top leg and I want you to just drape it over top of your bottom leg, get it in a nice comfortable position. Let's take that bottom leg and we're gonna straighten it back out, making a, a, again a nice line from our heel to our head. Flex that foot and now I just want you to pump up here. So the hip, the Jane Fonda works on the AB ductors, the outside thigh muscles. These are the AD ductors, the inner thigh muscles. I call this the Jane Fonda Jr. You can call it whatever you like. But we can feel that working really nice here. Four, three, two, one. Almost done with this side. Let's go ahead and get our knees together, bringing them close to our chest. Um, you can lay out stretch for this. This is gonna be a clamshell. So the clamshell essentially asks for you to pull your top knee away from that bottom knee, squeezing at the top here. It's more for the groin, piriformis, uh, a little bit more of those adductor, adductors, um, but really good stretch here, bringing it back down. If you want to increase what work you're doing with the core and you have good shoulder health, what you can do is have that elbow underneath of the shoulder, pull yourself up, keeping yourself in a nice straight line, and you can do the clamshell from here. This will work on those transverse abdominis while also working on your hips. So if you want to double, 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 and you're in a good position for your shoulder health to do so, you can. So let's go for four more. Three, two, and one. Bringing it back down. We're gonna do all this on the other side because I don't like to leave anything unbalanced. So you can just roll over. I'm gonna move so you can actually still see me. We're gonna do this from the top. So, Jane Fonda, get yourself in a comfortable position. Get that back leg kind of out of the way. We're gonna straighten out that top leg. I want you to flex your foot, and I want a nice straight line from the heel all the way up to the head. We're gonna take that toe, point it down towards the ground, have that heel pointed towards the ceiling, and we're gonna lift up. It might seem easy at first, because you just burned out the other side, but give it a little bit of time. If you want to increase the difficulty, you can take that leg slightly behind you, and that will focus a huge target on the glutes in addition to the hip flexors. Let's go for four, three, two, and one. From here, staying in the same position, we're gonna just flex the foot, not worry about toes down and heel up. Let's give some little circles forward. Little baby circles, doesn't require you to do this crazy nonsense. We just want to kind of think about the heel leading these tiny little circles for this hip. Let's take it back. Circle, circle, circle. Letting that heel draw that circle, that backward circle. And we're good. So let's take that top leg, drape it over top of our bottom leg, straighten out that bottom leg, flex it, keeping a nice straight line, and let's pump that leg up towards the ceiling. Get an adductor and abductor workout. All those hip flexors, lovely thigh muscles, strong things. Never even need to worry about going to that goofy thing at the gym, the little thigh machine. Doing these at home is perfect. You can add in ankle weights or therabands and get a better workout than that nonsense will ever do. All right. Three, two, one. All right, bring those legs back together, stacking those knees on top of one another. 
We're going back for that clamshell. Opening it up the top leg, holding at the top, coming back down. We're in a nice straight line again. Hips are perpendicular to the ground. We don't want to open them up, rolling forward or backwards. Again, if you're in good shoulder health and you want to lift up, you can do your clamshells in this capacity and add in the transverse abdominus work. Not necessary, but if you're able to, it's a great thing. Let's go for four, three, two, and one. All right. So that is what I had planned for everybody today. I wanted to see if there were any questions about what we did, any, um, any hurting parts on your body you want to uh, address, anything more on the core. I am here to answer the question. So. Uh, I had a question. Um, yeah. So when we were doing the Jane Fonda juniors, right? Mm -hmm. The way like to get the top leg to rest on the ground, my hips essentially rotate forward. Okay. Uh, so is it okay to put like my knee on a block or something like that to keep yep. my hips? Yeah, absolutely. So everybody's, everybody's hip flexibility is completely different. I know we had talked before about your hips not doing all the things you want them to all the time, but a block, a pillow, um, I have little like couch pillows that are perfect for those kind of things. If you have a foam roller or you have an additional uh, yoga mat, anything will work to do that. You never want to take yourself out of position. Everything we want to think about on our body is a system of angles. And I know some people absolutely hate math and geometry and physics and things like that. But essentially, biomechanics, which is what I studied, is physics of the body. So we're trying to work on how to use our angles in the most efficient manner basically trying to keep 90 degrees or less, keeping things perpendicular or parallel. So any time that your body is not having that mobility or flexibility to get yourself in the positions that are described, you can use something of assistance to get yourself into that position. There's never any shame. I don't want anybody to ever feel weird about using blocks, pillows, modifications. You do what's correct for your body. Not all of our bodies move the way, none of us move the same way. We have different skeletal designs. We have different muscle, muscle uh, composition. We have different injuries. We have different limitations. So always use the modification that you have and always feel free. Like if you're, not, if you're working out with me, everybody knows they can ask me questions all the time. If you're ever working out with somebody else, ask them for a modification. They need to be prepared to give those things to you. But that's a great question. Sure, thanks. Anybody else? No, we're good. So it was uh, not ice sweaty, but maybe it's because it's hot in my house. Um, so we didn't do like a huge, crazy, like drenching in sweat kind of workout, but these things are um, awesome. Glad you like, glad you like. Um, but all these things are like, you know, good things that you can incorporate on a regular basis. Even if you're taking 10 minutes a day to throw a couple of these exercises in, um, it is super important to, <laughs> super important to, uh, just try to incorporate these things. Know that your core is more than your abdominals. Know that you want to get them booties, uh, um, booties moving to support everything. But yeah, um, thank you all for joining me today. Thank you, Focus on Health. Thank you, uh, Seedlit for sponsoring this magical thing. Please take a look at the post that I have put up and that Lauren has put up and Focus on Health has put up because they've got a couple different ways for you to win some glorious prize packs from Seedlip. Um, it's like coming to these classes is definitely helpful. That registers you. Um, signing up for the newsletter. Lots of different things. So check out all those things. Um, we will be back Wednesday. So Wednesday, it's not going to be a workout session. We're going to talk about habit building and how to like navigate your habit loops, understand how your brain functions, and think about building better opportunities for you to make uh, changes right now if you want to. I know a lot of people are being super reflective during uh, quarantine and thinking that they have to write a book and be super productive, and you don't have to do that, but you can evaluate the things that you do on a regular basis to see if they are the best choices for you. Um, so yeah, Join me on Wednesday, uh, still 12 o'clock uh, Eastern, 11 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Pacific. Um, and we'll talk some things out there. Write down any questions that you might have. Bring some paper and pen.
tank because uh, we're going to do a little bit of um, just kind of workshopping on our own for some habits and goals that we want to set. But yeah, thank you all for being here. Love you. Appreciate it. You. I'll see you. Uh, I will see you on Wednesday. Great. Great as always. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, everybody. Thank